All right, so I'm going to go with a demo of our Azure DevOps to Project for the Web or Planner integration. So what you see on the screen right now is I have Azure DevOps open, and I'm in a particular Azure DevOps project, and then here we have a bunch of different work items. So primarily we're focused on Epic's features and user stories. But we can integrate and synchronize with any work items that you choose. But working with other customers, we tend to find that for the information that goes back to Project for the Web, they want to have higher level information. So hence, we tend to stick to epics, features, user stories, product backlog items. We're not doing things like issues, bugs, tasks, Although task is a gray area, some customers want to bring the task information over as well. So, and, and I think one of the key points here is really depends on how we do the integration. Um, it really depends on how your organization has Azure DevOps set up. Um, we see different types of usages and different types of configurations. Um, so when we do an implementation of this integration, Typically, we do need to take a look at how you're actually using Azure DevOps. Um, are there any other processes involved? And then we'll tweak the integration depending on what we're saying. All right. So in this case, for today's demo, I'm using a single ADO project that has a bunch of epics in that project. Um, now, an epic in this case for the demo today is equivalent to a project over in project for the web so we're basically linking at that epic level um, and then underneath there we would have different features and then each feature is then broken down into different user stories and you can kind of see that with the structure you're seeing here so in this particular view what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and create a new epic And I'm going to give it a name. If I want to assign it to anybody, I can. Um, in this case, I'm just going to keep it pretty basic. I'm going to hit save. And then what I'm going to do is create a couple features underneath. So I'm going to go create a new item in this epic. And then here I'm going to pick from the different work item types. As I mentioned earlier, we can actually synchronize any of these, but typically customers want to uh, synchronize higher level items. So epics, features, user stories, and depending on the process that you have set up in uh, DevOps, you might have other work item types as well. But in this case, I'm going to do a feature and I'm just going to name it, you know, feature 514 a-1 actually I think I already used that earlier so we'll do b-1 and now created a new feature up here I can assign it to any of the resources that are part of this project so I'm going to assign this one to myself and I'm going to hit save and then I'm going to add a couple user stories underneath this feature. And we're gonna have a couple of these, so I'm just putting in a particular name for the key. And again, I can assign this to anybody by default, it'll be whoever the parent I was assigned to, but I could also go ahead and assign it to somebody like Nash. So I'm going to hit save and close. And then we're also going to add another new item to the feature, another user story. In this case, it's going to make it number two. And we're going to assign this one to Topeka. Then save and close. And then we're good to go with this feature. So next, what I want to do under the Epic is create another feature.
make it number two. Uh, we'll assign this one to MASH. Go ahead and save it. And then I'm going to add a couple new items under here. So we're going to do a couple user stories. And in this case, make it B11. That's assigned to Mahesh. That looks good. And then we're also going to add another user story for two. And we'll assign that one to the people. All right. So I have my Epic set up. I have my features, my user stories set up. And if I go in here, I'm just going to rerun the query. You can now see our um, webinar epic. And then we have a couple different features. And then we have some user stories underneath this. And actually, it looks like I screwed up the name in here. So this should be 2 2. And this one should be 2 1. Okay. Now, in DevOps, this is really where your, say, your development team's going in and they're working on these different features, user stories, maybe other work items as well. Um, but a big part of that would be managing these in different sprints. So if I go to the backlog here, here you can see all of our different items. And over here, you can say I have a couple different sprints set up. Um, if I want to create a new sprint, I could do that. I'm actually just going to use this existing sprint, 0514, which is happening between these days over here. So if I go into here, down below here, you can see there's our four user stories that we created. And if I want to put them in a sprint, I can just drag it over, add it to that particular sprint. So we're planning to work on these user stories, you know, between those days. And here you can see all the different user stories. Now, some of these user stories, the 0514A, um, that's in another epic, so it's not going to synchronize that into that particular project. That would be synchronized into another project. Um, but yeah, I, I think we're good to go. So let me go back to project for the web. EPM 360 and what I'm going to do is just create a new project call it ADO webinar 514 and depending on how you know we set all of this up um, down here we have a section for our ADO configuration and two pieces of information we need to put in here is what's the project ID and then also what's the epic ID. So if I go back to here, I can see there's our project name. So I just gotta grab the project name and I'm gonna paste it into here. And then we need to get the epic ID. So if we go back to our um, good work query here, let's rerun this. Here you can see our epic and the ID for that is 444. So I'm gonna put 444 in here. And whenever you wanna trigger a synchronization with the ADO data, um, you just wanna set this to yes. So I'm gonna set it to yes. I'm gonna go ahead and save my project. And It'll take a few minutes for this to run. But what we'll end up seeing is on your task list, you'll see those features and user stories be brought in and added to your project schedule. And then under the ADO sync tab, you'll see other metadata. For example, the, the status or the sprint or iteration that the um, that those work items are running under. Um, so any of the ADO values that you want to pull back across to Project for the Web, we can pull them in as well.
So once the synchronization completes, if we go to task, you can then see that our features have been added to our project schedule. If you had an existing set of tasks here, it's just going to add them at the end, at the bottom of your task list. And as you can see, these are collapsed. So if I expand them, you can then see the different user stories that are a part of that. You can also see the resource assignments on the user stories. Um, there is an assignment in DevOps at the feature level, but since we're using this as a summary task, you can't do resource assignments at the summary task. So that should be fine. The other thing is if I go in and if I look at the start date, finish date, it's basically reflecting when the um, sprint's happening. Um, so as these user stories are put into their sprints, it gets synchronized over the project for the web. The start and finish data will reflect the start of the sprint and the finish of the sprint. The other thing is if I go into the ADO sync tab, this is where you'll see some of that other metadata. Um, so you can see our different uh, work item names, the work item IDs, what type of work item is it, and then what its current state is. So these were just created, so they're in a new state, and then I put them in the 0514 sprint. So that's the current iteration. All right. So your dev team over in ADO, they're going to continue to work on these items, and you periodically are going to want to synchronize that information. Now the synchronization can be scheduled. You, you could have a run every night or every four hours or once a week, whatever you want to set it to. And then you can also run it on demand and you saw that with the sync to ADO, yes or no option in the project itself. But if I go into here, so for example, let's go into our sprint. So I'm in that 0514 sprint. So on some of these items, or actually, hold on, I'm not in the right sprint. There we go. Now I'm in the right sprint. So here we see all of our new user stories that are part of that particular sprint. Now as the resource is working on this, they might be adding notes, they might be adding, um, you know, changing the status of that particular item. So we open it up. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to mark this one as active. And then this one I'm going to mark also as active. And maybe some of these other ones, you know, they've been resolved or closed out. I can go ahead and update the status for those. I'll leave this one in new. So again, your resources are going to be working on these items, are going to be updating it. Now, they may be updating other information in here as well, and if you want to synchronize that information, we can definitely do that. Um, I'm basically showing you the minimum of what we would typically synchronize. So if we go back to here, I'm going to force this to sync on demand. So if I just refresh this, you can see we're not syncing right now. But yes, I want to force a sync. So once I set it to yes and hit save, that'll trigger the synchronization. And if I go to task, see our schedule, and I didn't really change anything on the schedule, but I did change the status. So now when I go into here, you can see how the statuses have been copied over into Project for the Web as well. All right. And that's about it.